Good. That's a good one. We'll call the special meeting of the board to order. We'll stand be led in the pledge by Ms. Prokash. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you need standing for a moment of reflection? Here. Here. Yes. All of the above. <laughs> Be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purposes to review employment history of particular individuals and the employment history of particular corporations or firms. The board may take action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call. Yes. 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 Okay. We'll um, open the workshop meeting of the board. First item on the agenda is from the board president. I don't have any agenda items this evening. Next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. First, the report is a presentation on the day of Morty and District Architects. Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. Uh, normally, when we have the board workshop, it's later in the month, so we have had an opportunity to provide a full update for you. Um, given the fact that uh, this month's meeting is early and your last report came at the end of June, We'll be providing a full report uh, that you'll have at the end of the month. It will come out on July 26th. We will be including in that report uh, updates on all of the current projects that are underway. We will provide updated schedules so you'll have copies of all the schedules so you know where we're going with, re with regard to the work that will be underway into August. Um, I can report that all of the projects that were scheduled for construction this summer are underway. Uh, the majority of the work um, currently underway relates to abatement. Normally we have a couple of weeks of abatement we have to get out of the way before we can start work. Some of it is minor in nature. The uh, window replacement project that we're completing over at NFA main campus, for example, <laughs> is simply the exterior caulking removal of the windows on the back side of the building, which is really quite simple and very uh, straightforward. And then in a much more complicated manner, we're over at NFA North Campus where we have the plaster ceiling being removed from the gymnasium over there, which is a very significant abatement project. Um, we also have work underway at HOH, um, Gardner Town. We're finishing up the Hills <coughs> Gate. We have a little bit of work we're doing at South with some exterior doors. Uh, and then our major project this summer is at Gidney Ave, which we'll be talking about again um, a little bit later, and you'll get a full report with regard to everything that's going on over at Gidney Ave um, this coming month. I think that's just kind of a quick overview as to where we are. If anybody has any questions, we'll give you a full update. I just had one question, Terry. Yes. Um, on the punch list, how are we coming on the punch list for... Um, I'll give you an update on all the punch list in this report. We had requested copies of the punch list from the design professionals that did not make it in the last report. We have since received the majority of those. We are currently doing some reinspections. I know South, for example, we had work that had not yet been completed with regard to some of the door installations and there was still some work that needed to be done once the electrician got finished up. So you'll see updated punch lists as a part of our monthly report at the end of the month. <coughs> Are there any questions on, um, oh, never mind, we didn't get to that part yet. <laughs> I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> any other questions? So are you going to the next one? Or are you still on? No, it's a change order resolution. I'm just here for questions. Okay. Uh, resolution B is the new facilities project change orders associated with approved projects. NFA renovation. NFA order body and HOH renovation projects. 
HOH masonry and concrete restoration project, the Dales Gate renovation project set one and set two, and Gardner Town renovation project. I you know there's there's one change. I think the original draft that came out, we had a, a placeholder for the vegetation removal <coughs> along the fence line at HOH. You'll, that's been removed from the change order log. Um, we reissued that um, to a local contractors for bidding. Pricing came in about $10,000 less than the proposal that had been provided by the contractor. Um, that project is scheduled for um, commencement next week. There's a coordination meeting to be held this Friday with the architect and the vegetation removal contractor and the fencing contractor that's currently under contract uh, or as a sub to the GC. Um, <coughs> The other item that's on here of, of significance is um, the Valescape renovation work under Profex. There's a $15,000, $384 change order. That's for the uh, completion of the drainage and the swale work behind the building that we discussed at the last meeting. So that change order is also included. And then there's a $6,200 credit, which is uh, one of the things that uh, was mentioned earlier. We were able to utilize the PA system that was removed from Stewart when that building was discontinued and used by the district as a school building. And we're incorporating that equipment into the Valescape project. So this is the credit that was um, offered by the contractor to reflect the fact that the district is providing I was equipment. confused about that because it didn't say removed from Stewart. I'm like, why are we taking them up and putting them back in? So thank you for clarifying that's that. Where that. That's where that came from. Mary, yes. it's not Valescape County. Or Gardner County, I mean, I'm sorry. <coughs> the just a question. Uh, this HOH masonry concrete uh, restoration <coughs> that uh, manhole has been probably left with just a skid over it. Wooden skid. For over six months, do we have any idea if that's our fault? Is it somebody else's fault? Somebody had to do something, a fairly heavy piece of equipment had to be placed on top of that manhole for that thing to cave in and they came in. That we don't know for sure, but clearly it was damaged. If we knew who had done that, then there would be an associated back charge to go with us. <clears throat> we don't know when that was done or who may have done that, but it's something that obviously needs to be repaired. Oh, yeah, so the contractor, uh, yeah right. on, contractor on site, this is a good time to get it done. Yeah, I've got you no know. problem with it. I'm glad it's getting done because it is a health and safety issue. But, you know, you know, it just seems Don't know. It, shouldn't have, it shouldn't have been left this long. I don't know how it got. That's why we're addressing it now. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Perry. That ends this session. Thank you. So. <coughs> Next item on the agenda <coughs> from the Assistant Superintendent for Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the item A is the recommendations from the committees on special education. David, on number six, it's just total the number of students with disabilities on home instruction pending placement. Yes. What does that mean? Uh, these are students who um, have been uh, recommended for <coughs> placements outside of the district, and we haven't been able to find the placements. So, pending placements, do you have to provide the uh, no. home instruction? Does placement. that mean they get two hours? Two hours per day. But that's it. 10, 10 hours a, a week. Yes. And if they're elementary or secondary, I would imagine. At the elementary level, oh, think so. one hour, five hours uh, total. Oh, elementary, you get five hours? Yes, and secondary, oh, 10 hours. Okay, that's, a, that's what I'm asking. Yes. Okay. But you said they get two. Okay. At, the, at the secondary level, yes. I, okay. That was my oversight, sir. On number seven, Yes. in school suspension, what does that mean? What type of in school suspensions do we have? 
Uh, probably students who are referred to the uh, Student Assistance Center. The SAC. Pardon me? The Student Assistance Center, the SACs, uh, schools have... Uh, well, how about the other ones, the, the other schools? Are you talking about the high school? Uh, that would be in general, not necessarily the high school. Is they SAC rooms at, at all schools? Uh, yeah, the Staples. middle schools, they have... Same rooms they got, I don't know if got ready. Yeah, mm -hmm. and at uh, the two hill schools, they have a safe room also for the secondary level. Okay. It's for sixth grade and up. Yes. Six and up. Yes. They've saved it. Give me amateur elementary. Do they? I thought until this year. Yes. This year, right? Because we mm -hmm. ended it this we year. Ended. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And that was based on the size of the building. Mm -hmm. It, it didn't move to a K six building as we expected, so we made uh, that decision there. To say Mr. Levinsky. Um, getting back to number six, the total number of students with disabilities, pending placement. The, the number seems fairly consistent. Yes. What is the average time that there, this pending placement is? Is it, is it a week? Is it a month? Is it six months? Is it, it, could be, is it, it could be. It could be a month. It could be two months, depending upon when the institution or the uh, school where the child has been referred to uh, makes the reception uh, placement of the child, so the, yeah, so the, the child. The, the, is there different reasons why there could be a time uh, factor, in, you know, increasing the time placement? I mean, we, if we know that the student is recommended to be sent somewhere, isn't that done as, <coughs> as quick as possible? The school may say, we don't have uh, the uh, seats available right now or we are waiting for a child to move out so we can open space for the child or they may feel that the needs of the child cannot be met at this particular time so they may say uh, you know we won't be able to accept the child so it comes back to the district and then we would have to make another placement recommendation okay so so who is making the placement recommendation? the district makes the placement recommendation yes 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 but the schools themselves indicate whether they are able to accept the children or, or not, depending upon enrollment at this time and availability of seats. How many cases some of the hospitals were there? That's I understand that, but if, they're, if we're saying that this would be good for the student and it's not open for six months, we need to find something different. That's what we do. Okay, well, this doesn't say to me what the average weight is for placement. And perhaps that's something that we could do as a way to further uh, define what, what each category means. And we could put in ranges of uh, duration, a month, month to two months, etc. I, I think that that's important. Like you used the example of the hospital. So if there isn't a room over here in the emergency room waiting for a room to open. These kids do their, their education. And it, could, it, it um, could also be a very specialized school. I, I, yeah, I know. It's just general. It doesn't, it doesn't list that much there. Yes, and also the students have multiple needs. Sometimes it's not that easy to find a place to serve as multiple needs. And you might be going through the cycle of looking for a placement after placement after placement that hasn't been successful for some reason. Yeah. It might be that the parents haven't cooperated with the board. I, I, I understand. Yes. But we, we can provide that more defined information to break it down. I need to make a comment about number four. I think you would. Because <laughs> I have made it so frequently in the past that. I was waiting anxiously for uh, students to be declassified. Yeah. And, you know, 43 is not an insignificant number. But when you look at the total number of kids who are classified, 1,412, yeah. 43 kind of pales. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that it, it should be said that now for years and years, I personally, as a teacher in the district, was always under the impression that, that we were criticized because we seemed to be classifying too many students. And 
So if that's true, then we should be seeing kids being declassified when <coughs> they come up for their reviews and that, that, that this should be changing. So I, I was hoping for a much larger number, to be quite truthful. You know, now that we, we, we've got all of our ducks in a row, hopefully, you know, and, and we're doing everything you know, the way that we should be doing it, I, I would <coughs> hope to see a better result. And I can't help but wonder if, if this is based on the fact that once a child goes into special ed, you know, then they're, they're marching to that drama and being instructed in that way. And it becomes more difficult then for them to get back in the general yeah, yeah. population and be able to function well. So it, it, it does suggest to me, at least as, as an educator, that our initial placement has to be looked at very carefully and we have to make sure that we're only putting kids in who do belong there. And I know that I'm, I'm lecturing to people who don't need to hear you know, all those comments made, but I do, you know, I fear for our kids who get locked into an educational track that is not appropriate for them. Yes. But I also think, Judy, that this doesn't show, um, in some instances, uh, where a student might be in a self-contained one year, and then the next year might be have put into an inclusion class. Well, now that's a breakdown. And, that and maybe could be added. Right, and that's uh, they're moving out or, or they're being phased. They're phased, out. but it doesn't. Right. But they're still considered special ed. Right. So could you do that, David? You know, you know, could you add that piece of information? And as a, as a segue on the uh, second page at the top on the number one. Uh, we have the numbers of students who spend uh, time in regular education up to 40, between 40 and 80, and from 80 to 100 percent. So, uh, and I think we talked about that last time. What we want to see is that A is a low number, and that C is the highest number we want. So, I uh, I think that uh, there has been a progression there uh, from 245 to 188, which speaks to the fact that more students are being seen in a less restrictive environment, which could be B or C. And uh, hopefully, if we can continue to bring that 188 down a little, because there are students who may mean up to 40% in out of general education, but if we can keep bringing that 188 down to 160, 150, etc., given uh, due process, etc., and we can increase C and even B, then that is what we would like to see. And that shows a positive movement there for about, of about 70 students who are no longer in the 0 to 40 percent in general is, but they are either in B or C. Uh, meaning that the 259 from 240 is an increase even though the 671 is very close to the 681 with which we began the, the year. So uh, it would be interesting to know uh, in more detail where the 70 students went uh, to B or C in, in that breakdown of uh, uh, time in general education. So th that is a section that we can continue to look at and we can enrich more with that information. Yeah, I, I think more information would, would definitely be helpful and, and for you know, us to continue to to watch carefully this particular part of, of our student population. Uh, and I, I you know just signal that I will continue to watch the classifications next year. You know, so that every year, every month when this report comes through, I'm going to make a comment. And, and you know, I would, I would like to, to, to suggest that perhaps kids shouldn't wait until the end of the year, that, that if a child is in special ed and, and it should be obvious to people, you know, whether they, they are appropriately placed or not, that may be saying, well, they have to wait until the end of the year for a declassification hearing. Uh, um, is, is not necessarily educationally sound. So if, if there's something that we can do to move up the process data, I think it would be helpful. I know that the law gets involved, Marco. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing that says that we can't do more than the law, is there? And no, but generally it happens when you have the annual review, so you see how the child has done throughout the year and whether or not the educational disabilities have been addressed. 
also you might see some positive um, movement like now where you're going to have response to intervention on right. a greater scale and that's supposed to be the new pre-referral intervention so that kids will be addressed at the earliest stages right. so that hopefully they will not need special ed. It should keep them from being classified yes. in the first place, right? Thank you. But, but our, your point's well taken. And, and the goal in, in the special ed programs is to continually find the least restrictive environment. <coughs> And, and that's what the meetings are for. That's why uh, we continually evaluate <coughs> the programs that the individual students are in. And, and it is possible that throughout the year, and if the process provides for that, that if there is a child who has made sufficient progress, then that child can be uh, reassessed to make sure that if there is a possibility of declassifying the child, that could be done. Right. We shouldn't ever say, sorry, you have to wait until June. Okay. Okay. Yes. Right. Any other questions? On that? <coughs> um. my, uh, may I say one thing about that? Yes. The parentally placed students, there are 44 of them, I think that our office should be reviewing those IEPs to make sure that they're okay. Yes, the contact is actually, and I will let her know. Thank you. Uh, the next item would be, and I'm reading from the blue page, uh, resolution B, which would be a resolution to authorize the superintendent of uh, schools to execute an agreement with uh, Glenn Scott Pay, Dr. Pay for the provision of state-mandated medical services and to work as a school physician and collaborating physician to the district. And uh, there is a copy of the um, contact uh, for your information. So it's basically uh, the same contract that we had this past year uh, with the difference that we are going to be paying in 12 installments instead of 10. Uh, and what... Uh, um, <laughs> we need the rain. What a surprise. Oh, uh, well, I, you know, she had hers washed, so you know, now we know why it's raining. And, and what we can find with Dr. K is that by using MDPC, uh, uh, he will be able to assign a, an MD whenever the doctor himself is not able to be present at, at one of the activities. So he'll be able to present another MD okay. at the same level. So that's something that we wanted for us. Now we changed this um, last year. Um, Mr. Pacella, do you remember how much of a savings this was compared to what we were doing prior to this? Yeah, about 20000 20, but we're going to get, we get more service with Right, this. because now we're going also to 12 months on this? No, the, the annual is the same. I think um, Dr. Uh, Thomas was 82,000. Yes, he was 8, eight versus 60. But he wasn't providing the services and oversight that we needed with the nurses and the, the, um, the physical exams and all those where Dr. K is. And uh, plus he has an office. In, Locally, in, right. in the district um, that we do send students up, especially mm -hmm. in sports physicals, mm -hmm. and he does provide uh, more oversight as well as the required um, home football games. And he will also have a second office, and that's what he'll be able to provide more um, and <coughs> coverage right now than in the past. Okay. We did bid this out also, and he was our feeding club. And I, I would see is a resolution to approve facility use requests uh, that uh, are also included in the package. And this time there are two. And one is from the New Life Worship Center, and the other one is from the New York Free Library. Uh,
the information that you have is uh, sketchy in terms of the, the costs, because at the time, they had just recently been brought to us, or not at all. So for O28, 13 O28, we have calculated some costs of about 3150, and that would be for custodial charges. Um, at this point, uh, we are in the process of determining whether security charges might be needed in light of the fact that they are asking for about 82 people to, to attend uh, or to participate in those services. I think we probably have to ask more questions about the nature of the service. If it's strictly worship, of that, there are other components of the service. There was a, 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 a um, policy <coughs> in New York City that said that no permit will be granted for holding religious worship services or otherwise using the school as a house of worship. And that was upheld by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals and the United States Supreme Court did not take the case. Then they got a temporary restraining order allowing them to continue using it based upon a different, not the constitutionality of that policy because it was found to be constitutional, but based upon First Amendment free association rights and use of school of, of public facilities. So a district court, a US district court judge allowed them to continue to use, but New York City has appealed that to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals and we don't have a response yet. But in that case, they had a specific policy that did not permit religious services or using the school as a house of worship. So we have, you know, we, we have to wait and see what happens at the uh, U.S. at the uh, Second Circuit Court of Appeals level. Mr. Levinson. I, I don't have a problem with the lawyers saying that this is okay, the, the worship service. But the, the person who is running this, isn't that an administrator? in that building? Uh, Dr. Malo is the person who made the request. He's an assistant principal at New Winchester. In, in the building. So that, I have a more concern with that, that it's an administrator <coughs> doing a worship service in the building that he is at, mm -hmm. more than just generally you know, worship service. If the lawyer says we can, that's fine. But that seems <coughs> a little, um, I don't know. I don't know what word to use. But I don't you know if, it, if it's. And being an administrator in the building and conducting the worship service in there could, could maybe be construed as something kids, kids or adults are doing that maybe they don't really Well, we, we also need to ask more questions about the nature of the service and whether it's just strictly a worship service or if there are other components of the service. And we can have that ready either the following so week. So we can decide, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm it says from 7-1-12, they haven't done it yet though, right? They haven't. Okay. They haven't. Four cars pending uh, before the decision. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do we have to ask them what they're going to use the money for and all that kind of stuff? Like we have to ask all these other groups? Or because they're a religious group, are they treated differently? They, they are not going to be charging any fees for this. Uh, it's going to be just their worship uh, services. I don't know. My church passes the plate every Sunday. <laughs> 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 um, well, I know, but you know, people look at me funny, Muriel, when I go. It's also from Chester. Yeah, I have come with you. We don't discuss it more. I mean, we have facility use policy, but I don't think it addresses anything specific to something like this or our groups from outside of the district. And before you leave tonight, we have to set a policy meeting date anyway. So. Okay. So we'll get additional info about that particular one and then report to the board. The, the second facility use request is uh, probable because of the rain outside. And uh, this is from the New York Free Library. We're going to have uh, uh, James uh, Patterson, uh, 
on Saturday. However, we anticipate rain. I believe that. No, so I'm not. No. no? <laughs> I heard today that. Uh, it's raining again. Yeah. People who because I tried to predict a snow day four days in advance. Well, okay. Um, so, it's not going to rain on you. We will have to, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to make a decision, I suppose, by Thursday at the latest. But we just wanted, particularly as public system, wanted to make sure we had a backup location in right. case, yes. just in case, in case Saturday's weather is bad. Okay. At the moment, the forecast is a 10 percent chance of shower or something. So, okay. And we have a tent coming to this location, uh, which is our preference. This is a library program, but just in case something blows up between now and then. We would like to have a They felt that the auditorium was not large enough, and I, I tend to think it won't be large enough. Particularly once the district gave away his book to every fifth grader in the school district, uh, which was fabulous, by the way. But, um, you know, I'm kind of bumped now that I'm going to be out of town. I would well, definitely been there. He, as I understand it, just Mr. Patterson is a very generous gentleman, and he comes to Newburgh more than frequently to do events. So you may get a chance to see him. Let me know when he's in town again. I think we need to get the last call. A little piece of info there is that in terms of expenses, we, um, Mr. Collins, and I calculated uh, $450 for custodial uh, services uh, because uh, on a Saturday, the NFA is not open, so we would have to have a custodial. <laughs> And it, in terms of security, uh, we thought about three monitors. It could become two, but in light of the number of expected uh, participants, and that would be about uh, four hours per monitor, and that would be eight hundred and forty dollars. So the cost would come to about a thousand twenty and ninety dollars projected custodial and security expenses. Because uh, if it rains, if it rains. Hopefully, no, not right here. This is a backup. The board is the board The board will have to make All right, so we'll be giving approval to it before it actually takes place. Yes, I'm sorry, we have a resolution tonight for this? No, but I, I, I can draft one. So. All right, we can use this, David. Uh, we just we won't uh, do the new life worship center because we're waiting for more information on that. But we can use the resolution uh, that's in the agenda tonight and just have it for the new Bird Free Library. <laughs> Yes, Mrs. McAfee. I, 
I'd like to make a comment about Tracy uh, going to the National Council of Teachers and English Convention. I'm delighted to see it, but I don't understand why it's even here, yeah. because the way it reads, she must be paying all of the expenses, so why do we have to, you know, I mean, it makes no sense. There's no sub required, and she must be paying her way. I guess it's a point of information so that the board knows where their employees are at their school. Well, we should be embarrassed by it. <laughs> yeah, that we finally we have someone paid. going to the National Council of Teachers in English, and, and we're too tight to, to pay any of the expenses involved? Well, maybe someone else is paying. I don't have an answer for you, but I'll have it for you before you vote on it. Okay. So you would also want to approve her to go for liability issues because it is a function of her job that she's covered in case anything happens. But have you ever seen where where, mm. where the no. teachers pays for the sub? I don't I mean, know if there's a sub required for those days. Fifteenth well, or the eighteenth. I don't know if it's a weekend. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Is it Thursday, Friday? It has to be. Well, oh, maybe there's a <laughs> class. I, I, I just answered the first question for liability okay. issues. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good answer. The liability, because I wasn't thinking about that. But it, it does make me embarrassed. I mean, you, we see things over and over and over again here that are, you know, very pricey. Yeah. You know, and here we've got somebody going to something that that directly relates to the literacy of the children in the school district, and I don't recall ever seeing. You know, a teacher art administrator go to this particular conference. Uh, and so I'm delighted that it's there. But so let uh, Mr. Pizzo can find out for us whether she even tried to yeah. request right. that we cover it. Yeah. I, 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 I often wonder if, 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 you know, if we were told mm -hmm. you know, what people asked to do right. and, and reasons given for the refusals. You know, uh, if we wouldn't be very surprised, you know. uh, because I hope what has happened, you know, is that the teachers are still putting in for it, you know, and I sometimes worry that maybe they've given up and they don't even try anymore. Mm -hmm. so we'll find out That's how they do. It is. Mm -hmm. They don't even try anymore they because try. They, they're turned down. It's my daughter came mm -hmm. for her own conference the first few times, and now she... And that could be what happened with Tracy. Yeah, you know, that you know she didn't even bother asking because she knew that you know, it, it would be you know, would be, or assumed. But at this point, it's pure speculation right. in a public meeting. Right, and you're going to check. Them. Thank you. Yeah. That's all we have for this session. That's item on the agenda for the assistant <laughs> for finance. Welcome back, Mr. Pasella. So, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Good to be back. First resolution is to authorize, <laughs> to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with the Anderson Center for Autism to provide educational services for the upcoming 12-13 school year for district students. <clears throat> this is normal annual business when we get these things to uh, place students that, they're, that are pending sometimes. <laughs> Item B is a resolution to authorize superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with J and D Ultra Care Corp to provide nursing services for the upcoming 12-13 school year for district certain students who require such services. Uh, we always have trouble <coughs> finding nurses when we're, they're being requested. This is uh, uh, a company that provides them. Sometimes they run out because we require so many of them. And then David, poor David has to hunt for the 504 <laughs> needs. But this sets up the same thing we've done each year also. <clears throat> Item C is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute the initial 2012-2013 contract with the Ulster BOCES to provide cooperative educational services. Um, all the BOCES, Orange Ulster, uh, Ulster, Putnam, Westchester, are basically a la carte uh, educational services. And these contracts that are, are, they go through by our curriculum instruction folks and our special ed folks to kind of, as a guideline, know what we're going to purchase in the next year on these services. And there's deadlines that the BOCES require to, so that they can provide their staffing. So this is the initial contract. If we don't have anyone going by certain deadlines, we, we end those contracts. So you'll see, and most of you are aware, at the end of the year, you'll see a revised or final contract of the actual services we actually purchased. 
amount is nine hundred twenty-four thousand four hundred thirty-two dollars and eighty cents. Did we use that much last year? Right? Um, sure. Close to it. Wow. Most of these items that are here are known known students as of right now. Right. You know, those that come in during the year are extra add, over and above. Right. Wow. This is the smaller. The orange holster contract is up around seven or eight million. Right, yeah, it's yeah, it's much more than just students also, the orange holster. This is a little more than just students too. There's other things yes. here. Yes. So. Right. But we per, we get other related services more from the orange also because of the locality. This this here this looks like set this is seven students I think for for Ulster County Is that what we had last year or is that what we projected to have this year? No. Coming no. Up? no, there's a, if you look there's a hundred and seventy where are you seeing seven students? Um if you look per student, not per session, per session is add-ons, I guess. There's, there's four per student on the first line for that one group, and uh, three per student um, about two-thirds of the way down. Otherwise, it's per session. I guess it's what, whatever is, say, counseling done for those students. It looks like seven students. Well, seven students, right. For four, and then all their related services that they require. You know. So what Mike, I'm saying is, is that what we're projecting to have seven students go there this coming year? Is that what we had last year? I think year? that's what they had last year. That's what they had last year? And, and then, and private student aid, by the contract, we went over the projected numbers and made sure that they were either the same or increased or decreased based on projections, but projections based on IPs. Mm -hmm. Item D is a resolution to authorize payment of property tax refund as a result of the court order. The amount is $18,706.96. Um, as most of you recall, the, these amounts now will come directly out of fund balance, the reserve that we have set up for the tax certiorari's because we depleted that budget line and the operating expense. So this $18,000 is a direct charge against the reserves and we'll have to make the transfer accordingly. Um, now I know we saw an increase in these this past year. Mm -hmm. um, how much did we increase that line for this year's budget? In the anticipation the budget is zero. We took it away. We took it out. Right. You had two hundred thousand dollars budgeted in eleven twelve and you made it zero with the intent to <coughs> go directly to the reserves that we've built up over the years. So announced. it's coming out of reserve fund balance, the reserve for tax search Oh, okay. So we've tucked it away somewhere. It's now we can use that based on the new thing that came down from the state. That said we could no, 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 no. For tax search you can always do that. All right. That was the whole intent. So why weren't we reserve. doing that before? Well, because you were, you were reserving, you lowered your operating expense budget and still use your reserves. Now you've made the 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 conscience intent to just use reserves now and not use your operating budget. We've always dipped into those reserves. We uh, the Newburgh Mall one um, is very very large. We were advised by council um, to not pay yet because the town of Newburgh is appealing uh, the decision. Until that appeal goes forward, and we've been advised to not pay it. But that's going to be coming soon, and it's very, very large. Now, this would be like the um, fund balance. This isn't something that we're able to replace each year. So when that's we use the reserve, it's gone. No, your reserve fund balance, when we close the books, and we'll be doing that over the next couple months, hopefully we will, our revenues will exceed our expenditures like in any good business. Um, and in a nonprofit business, if everything was equal, your revenues would equal your expenses. That's not the real world. So you, we try to operate the budget so that it comes in 
under budget, which that has not happened because of all the things that we've added during the year. But at the very least, you hope that your revenue comes in over your expenses, which means you have a positive net income. That net income then gets distributed to an appropriated fund balance or appropriated fund balance. Your appropriated fund balance are your reserve fund balances for tax certiorari, for workers' comp, unemployment insurance. They don't get done until after the books are closed. When I can report to you of how much you can appropriate okay. to each one of those reserves. So right now, they're still at the level that we appropriated for at the end of 2011. You don't usually appropriate reserves. You're supposed to, I know when you're supposed to do it. Um, but it, that just doesn't happen because we don't know how we're ending the year yet. Okay. Um, and when do we know how we're ending? We'll know probably within, um, within the month. Okay. You know, there's still a lot of outstanding payments being made, um, a lot of approvals being done. Um, so we'll have about a month to, to get all those figures, and we'll kind of have a roundabout figure on how we did for the year. Uh, we've, it's been close for the past couple of years because we've been so tight on the budget. Tax revenues have been low. Right. So it's been close. Okay. Item E is a resolution to accept <laughs> the monthly bills and reports. Present to you the human resources agenda. Item A is professional <laughs> change of location. As section B is civil service appointments. C is civil service change of location. D civil service resignations and the necrology of one of the long time employees in the business office, Florence Hotel. No, we're adding. 
Okay, I would ask that the board add resolution C to the agenda. We resolve that the Board of Education of Newbury and Large City School District hereby approves the use of school district facilities pursuant to the request submitted by Newbury Free Library. I have a motion to add resolution C to the Second. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levitsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Perfect? Yes. Mr. Rush? Yes. Yes. We'll take your answer as a resolution A. All right. Yeah. Short word. Okay, resolution A. Resolution to award contract for the district's capital construction project at Gibby Avenue Memorial School K-8 conversion to renovation. Second motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. 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 Okay, resolution B. Be resolved that the board hereby appoints Dr. David Noriega to serve as the district's authorized resolution session representative for the 2012-2013 school year when special education and partial hearings are requested. And we have further resolved that Dr. Noriega shall have authority to enter into the resolution set settlement agreement on behalf of the board, subject to the board's right to reject any such agreement within three business days of execution. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Prokash? Yes. Mr. Rush? Yes. Mr. Rush? Yes. Mr. Rush? Yes. Mr. Yes. Resolution C. Be it resolved that the Board of Education and the Bergen and Large City School District hereby approves the use of school district facilities pursuant to the request submitted by each organization. This one is the Newburgh Free Library. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Yes. Mr. Prokash? Yes. Mr. Rush? Yes. Mr. Whittle? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. <coughs> I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yay. Thank you.